Hello my friends and welcome. Let's start from the major hotspot from all of the front lines of the Ivka town. Russia decided to assault once again from the southern direction, but their attack was repelled by Ukrainian defenders. Ukraine even counterattacked using extra forces, reinforcements that were sent a couple of days ago to mostly conquer the Russian assault on the northern part. They were successful, unfortunately, over here, moving to the town itself. But for us today, this spot is more interesting so let's check out some of the photos from the drones. So here we have the Russian tanks again in their failed attack attempt. They lost many of the tanks this time and lots of the infantry fighting vehicles. It seems like Russian tanks collided between each other again, not knowing whether they need to assault or retreat. I'm still waiting for the big video from the place. Also this time Russia used T-62 very old tanks, not as kamikaze tanks as they used them before, putting lots of the mines and bombs inside, sending those to the Ukrainian positions. No, they used them as the combat tanks for this assault. It means that Russia is in lack of the modern tanks already. You may find this tank over here and later on I'm gonna show you the T-55 tank that was captured by Ukrainian army. Also Soviet-made T-80 tank was used for this attack. It was at first damaged but later on destroyed by Ukrainian drones. And here we see the T-62 on attack again. So altogether for this attack Russia lost 9 of the tanks 12 BMPs, they also lost many of the soldiers, but they took the ground 300 meters as average. The Russian assault started from the Vodina village located in this place and they covered a few meters, I would say maybe even a couple of the kilometers and later on were ambushed by Ukrainian defenders. Now the main thing is over here to protect the northern part of the town because the fight is already happening in the urban environment. It was confirmed by Ukrainian soldiers today. But having just a single assault vector, Russia is not capable to advance to the town. They need at least two, but this one is no go for now because there is the only street that leads them to that town. Russian forces are jammed between this railroad and this river very narrow place for them to advance to their town and I don't think that they will be successful with that. That's why they want to advance from this side but they were unsuccessful at least for now. Hopefully it will continue like that. I believe that Russians do not have the capability to advance to the town from this side. They need to cover lots of the minefields and there are some natural obstacles as you can see some of the rivers and quite significant Ukrainian defense. Yes, Ukraine wasn't able to create the defense lines all around the town. They were created just over here and Russia already broke through them. And unfortunately, it's too late to create them on the north and on the southern part. General Zaluzhny knows about it. That's why he also predicts that Russians might take this town under control in the coming couple of months. However, today Ukraine is capable to defend of Divka. It is good. If we check out the deep state military source, we may see that Russia advanced a little from this direction. They've took a few meters, but still. So yesterday and today they've took this forest line. By the time Russians were performing their attacks in this place, President Zelensky decided to visit Robotina. It's the zero position if we speak about the front lines. It means that the fighting ongoing there constantly. This village is under severe Russian fire. Definitely President Zelensky went there to greet our soldiers, our defenders of the southern part of Ukraine. They do fantastic job. As you can see from the photos, it's very muddy out there. The weather is like this even in Avdivka, the eastern side of Ukraine. Since it was very dangerous out there in Robotina, they spent most of their time underground under the cover. Here we have the vehicle losses for both of the sides for the last three days. Totally, Russia lost 198 of the vehicles, Ukraine lost 78. We have the supply vehicles here as well, so Ukraine targets lots of the Lada small supply vehicles, but Russia also targets Ukrainian boats. We are speaking about here some direction. Unfortunately, I may confirm that Russia targeted many of the Ukrainian boats mostly ambushing them without the crew. They were just left in the river and Russia targeted them using drones. Russians even published some of the videos about it, 
how they drop the bombs on top of those boats. Luckily, our soldiers were not inside. The Ukrainian Abrams tank was spotted near to Avdiivka. I think that this video was taken a few days ago, then it was snowy in Avdiivka. Russia continued to lose their China-made vehicles. China supplied many of those to the Russian Federation and they used them on the front lines. Those are looking similar to the golf carts and Russia uses them for supplies. They didn't even paint them in the greenish color. So it is quite easy to spot those. Yes, Abrams also has the yellow paint, but they have some of the masking nets on the top. The vibes of the Russian soldiers had created the group of Devka direction. It seems like they are losing lots of the husbands out there. Let's go to translated version. So they are saying that Avdivka is like Bermuda Triangle. From the chat we see that there were several of the Russian attacks on 10th of January, on 15th of January, after which wives lost any sort of the communication with their husbands. And this is the Russian T-55 Jurassic tank, which was used as the tank to assault on Ukrainian positions. It was demolished with the help of the drone. From the tuning on this tank was just the grill on the top, which didn't help. Later on, Russians sent one more tank to this particular spot and again it was ambushed. But sometimes the Russian DIY defense works. For example, this is the Russian T-90 tank. It got several of the strikes from the FPV drones to the top, to the side, and somehow it managed to get home in one piece, let's say, but with some of the damages to the fans. As you can see, after all, those cages or grills might work. They're very simple to make and install and may protect the tank, but not 100% guarantee the tank survives. I think that it was just a lucky T90. Now let's go to the other news. Unfortunately, I was right, my friends. Zelensky wants to dismiss General Zaluzhny. Where do we have the information from? Well, from Zelensky himself, he said about it. He confirmed those intentions during the interview to the channel Rai One. This is the Italian channel. So he was asked with direct question whether he wants to dismiss Zaluzhny and he says that yes, we need to reload our system and I'm thinking about the change, it is truth. This change will touch many of the people in military and also outside military but in a country management. It was the part of the code which was interesting for us. Well, honestly, I think that it's the huge mistake to dismiss Zaluzhny. And something tells me that Zaluzhny will not be dismissed for a very long time. After all, there will be elections in Ukraine, maybe this year, maybe after a few years, but they will be and Zaluzhny will keep his popularity. I know for sure that without Zaluzhny it would be very difficult to defend Kyiv and Russia might have occupied many more Ukrainian territories. General Zaluzhny really a savior of Kyiv and not only. He is a talented commander that was at the proper place at the proper time. Obviously, if Zaluzhny goes, I'll film a big video about him and probably about the disagreement and confrontation between him and president's office, which is actually I'm going for a very long time. Why Zaluzhny is so popular among Ukrainians? Because he is not a politician, he is purely a commander of Ukrainian armed forces. He has never been into corruption schemes or other stuff. Yes, our president wasn't also involved into corruption schemes, but his party was. It is presented in our parliament as majority and many of those are very corrupt. According to polls, the president's party is not that popular any longer. People voted for it five years ago because they expected some of the changes in Ukrainian policy, but those didn't happen. Because of this, let's say, disappointment, people start to search a new leader. That's why Zaluzhny got huge rating even compared to president. And maybe it was also a reason why he will be dismissed by President Zelensky. I think he will be because after all, President Zelensky said that he is going to do it. He is willing to dismiss Zaluzhny. So it seems like this drama is going to be over soon, but just temporary, as I told you, Zaluzhny will come to his position or maybe to other position, but in the future he will not put this aside. I was able to find the original interview, it is in Italian, we have the translation, but not into English, it is in Italian. 
What about Zelensky? For me personally, I didn't vote for him during the presidential elections. I know that he got lots of the support from our people. 73% voted for him because people expected some of the changes. And he also said that he will do everything to stop the war in Ukraine. But unfortunately, Putin decided to attack Ukraine with more forces starting the full-scale war. It's not about Zelensky, I think, the start of the war. But he wasn't really prepared for it. It is probably his biggest mistake. Proper defense lines were not created even though our allies stated that Russia might attack Ukraine, but Zelensky didn't listen to them. He was sure that it was some sort of the political game. Also telling Ukrainians that be calm, there will be no war, everything will be fine, so it didn't happen as he predicted. But Ukraine is still able to withstand against the Russian attacks because of our people and because of the commanders like General Zaluzhny. My friends, it is my personal opinion as a Ukrainian citizen and I'm telling you, I was never a supporter of Zelensky as a politician. I didn't vote for him and I didn't see him in politics of Ukraine. So my opinion could be different with reality or could be different with yours. Don't pay too much attention on that. All right, we have the new information that Russia is getting ready to attack Kharkiv Oblast once again. They want to regain the lost territories which they lost in 2022. Russians want to concentrate their forces on Kupensk. They already accumulated enough forces for this jump. 500 tanks, 600 armored vehicles, many of the artillery systems and 40,000 soldiers. All of that will go to Kupensk. So this is the Kupensk city, it is under Ukrainian control and actually Russia is already trying to advance towards Kupensk by taking Sinkivka village. They got several of the convoys, attacking convoys and all of them were ambushed. There were at least eight of the attacks of the Russian forces towards that village. They wanted to advance to Kupensk. But it seems like the shortest distance for them is not very successful. That's why they try to assault from this place. Well, 40,000 soldiers and 500 tanks is a lot. But even that would not be enough to occupy Kupensk. It is a large city. From the geographical point of view, it is also hard to advance over there. There are some of the rivers, lakes and other stuff that stops Russian advancement. So I don't think that they will be successful in a nearby perspective. Maybe in a couple of years they might do it, but not with 40,000 soldiers. They need 100,000 for this city. And we have the confirmation that Russia started some of the movement in Kupin's direction from our press officer of the border guards. He says that Russia increased artillery fire by two times in Kupensk direction. So they are getting ready for something. Also we have the information that Russian sabotage groups tried to advance to Ukrainian territory crossing the border in Sumy region. But our border defenders pushed them out with heavy losses from the Russian side. The Russian sabotage group was small, a little bit more than 10 people. Inspectors from the International Atomic Agency reported that Russia started to put more mines into the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant all across perimeter. They report that it is unsafe and call for urgent inspection from office. But for Russians, everything is okay. The mines in nuclear power plant is normal. The Institute for the Study of War confirmed the advancement of Ukrainian army near to Klishivka, where our guys recently and unexpectedly took the ground. Awesome, I reported about it in my last video. G7 countries finally want to make Russia pay for Ukraine using their assets which are now frozen in Europe and the United States of America. The Russian funds are frozen just for Russia, but they continue to work and Russia got some of the income. Potentially got it, but not receiving on their accounts. So those funds will go for Ukraine. If Russia disagrees with that, all of the funds will go to Ukraine. At least this kind of the mechanism is now in operation by G7 and will be implemented in the nearby future. Yeah, this video is a vertical horizontal type of, but here you may see delivery of the Russian soldiers from Avdivka to Moscow. Many of the boxes with the Russian soldiers will be sent very soon. Again, we see the scale of the Russian losses in this stupid war that was done by Russians, by Putin to be more precise.
My friends, don't forget to press your huge like to this video, by doing so you help me a lot. And if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. Guys, thank you so much for your awesome support. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.